Okay, so now we've got Skype uh, not playing up as much for a second or two anyway. So your turn. Yay! Okay. Now this one is going to be a little hard to... Uh, you're going to have to look at it to really understand why this is so bad. I will try and read it as best as I can, but really go look at it when I post the link now. Mm -hmm. Teen says, it's your fault I burglared you in letter to robbery victims from November 24th, <laughs> which is Thanksgiving. You bastard. I don't know why I am writing a letter to you. Before you raid our comments section with complaints of bad spelling and punctuation, this is how a 16-year-old, quote, apology letter began after he robbed a family home. The UK teen was forced to write to his victims in Leeds, but showed no remorse or remorse, and wrote them a list of reasons why the whole debacle was their fault, the Sun reports. Our UK counterparts have described the kid as shameless, callous, a feckless thug, and a Yob. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but okay. Mm -hmm. About sums it up. To be honest, I'm not bothered or sorry about the fact that I burglared your house. Basically, it was your fault anyways. I'm going to run you through the dumb mistakes you made. Now, at this point, I will scroll down and read the whole letter. I don't know why I am writing a letter to you. I have been forced to write this letter by ISSP. I don't know what that is. Mm, I don't know what it is either. To, to be honest, I'm not bothered or sorry about the fact that I burglared your house. Basically, it was your fault anyways. I'm going to run you through the dumb mistakes you made. Firstly, you didn't draw your curtains, which most people now to do before they go to sleep. Secondly, you're dumb. You live in Stainburns, a high-risk burglary area, and you're thick enough to leave your downstairs kitchen op window open. I wouldn't do that in a million years. But anyways, I don't feel sorry for you, and I'm not going to show any sympath or remorse. Yours sincerely. Mm. So, um, this guy is just like a brilliant English ace. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like the spelling is god-awful. The uh, punctuation... Okay, there is no grammar in this at all, period. There might be a grandma, but there's no grammar. Yeah. Ooh, and nice if fun. anybody's wondering about the sound that is about to happen, we have a street sweeper coming up and down the street. Um, so, yeah. It's like a big vacuum thing. Yay, vacuum! And the street badly needs it, so it's like, yay! But do you have to do it now? Oh. Of course it does, exactly when we're recording. <laughs> you wait till it comes on my side of the road, the whole house just goes... Brrr. It's like it's, the whole thing's going to get sucked up. Your house vomits? No, I wasn't making a vomiting noise. <laughs> it was... Well... Hang on. It was doing doughies. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, so let's just talk This is the part where the radio show goes out the window. Well, yeah. Well, the disturbance is out the window. <laughs> just go down the street for like five minutes, man. Okay, speaking of cars and trucks and heavy moving equipment and stuff, poor wheel drive. It's a dog driving a bus. No, really, from November 21st. Meet Woodley. Now say it again with feeling. <laughs> yeah. He's a German coolie. I think that's supposed to be collie. Um, he's two years old and he's, a, he's man's best friend. Oh, and one other thing, he drives huge buses. The pull-away pooch made news over the globe when the Northern Territory News reported that he took a 20-ton bus for a joyride through Darwin. I wonder if this was the same time that Obama was there. Anyway, UK... In which case, he needed bus insurance. Dog insurance, not crocodile insurance. Ha. 
a UK tabloid, The Sun, nosed out the story. Nosed, I think it is. Um, nosed out the story about the streetwise dog regaling the tail, tail, of the clever mutt who learned how to drive by watching his owner. Hmm. Hmm. Richard McCormick, sixty-two, said Woodley unleashed the handbrake, presumably with his teeth, paws, for effect. Ha ha. And hit the streets like any good copycat dog. He sits next to me when I'm driving, and in the driver's seat when I'm not, he told the Northern Territory News. The handbrake is on the dashboard, and he's seen me release it many times. This was weird, even for the Northern Territory. Luckily, no one was harmed, and no damage was done. Woodley might keep, uh, might be kept on a shorter leash in future, though. He's still my best mate, Mr. McCormick said. Aww. Aww. Could you imagine that, though? Um, replace Sandra Bullock with a <laughs> with a dog. <laughs> you gotta keep well, it. I, what I want to know is, is the dog any better a driver than most of the people here? Uh, well, he's not drunk. <laughs> Good point. But he and might, touche. But, but he might be all thumbs. Ha! Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Must be a tall dog, though. I mean, if he can reach oh, the... No. I don't think they actually went anywhere. I think the bus just sort of rolled. Okay, so I have to ask. What... Other horrible, horrible things have happened in the Northern Territory to where it says this is weird, even for the that kind of. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just say if you're gonna come to Australia and you want bizarre things, head to the Northern Territory. Mm-hmm. You mm. have to know weird, like really, really terrible things have happened if that sentence is in there and no one blinks an eye. It's like, oh yeah, dog driving a bus. Yeah, psh, God, that was in the news last week. Copycat dog. Must be in the Northern Territory. Mm, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Epic. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's see. Should I do naked or dead people? Uh, Do naked. Yay, naked! <laughs> Speaking of, I'm not naked right now. Right now, I am wearing my doctor shirt. Hello, I'm the doctor, basically. Run. No, I'm wearing my, and then Buffy staked Edward, the end shirt. <laughs> so we're all prepared for today. We Ish. are. So, yes, it's a good thing you're wearing clothes because uh, if any of you are to planning on taking a vacation into the Swiss Alps, just remember there is a court rule that says no naked hiking. Um, Why would anyone want to naked hike? It, hike naked. <laughs> <laughs> naked hike. <laughs> you know what, Belinda? <laughs> I'm going to exterminate you. <laughs> With my cake beater and my plunger. Mm hmm. It's easy to be a Dalek. Anyway, <coughs> why would anyone want to hike naked <laughs> in the Alps? Mm hmm. Mm. If you ever dreamed of hiking naked through the Alps, forget it. Why that's a fantasy in the first place, I will never know. It is cold. Switzerland's, Switzerland's highest court ruled today that local authorities can fine anyone who decides to stroll the mountains in the buff. The federal Supreme Court, by a vote of 3-2, to two, threw out an appeal by a 47-year-old man uh, who <laughs> was fined 100 francs, which is $109, for ambling naked past a family picnic area in the <laughs> eastern region of Appenzell in 2009. 
Mm, Rapunzel, a devout conservative region. <laughs> Stupid. A devout and conservative region that only granted women the right to vote in 1990 oh. had passed a ban on nudist hiking earlier that year after an influx of unclothed ramblers. According to the local Switzerland, the man admitted he had been hiking all natural and said he had indulged in the practice for two years, but he denied he had been acting indecently. The Supreme Court said in a statement today, it is not overly high-handed there's the truck again qualify, <laughs> to qualify naked hiking as a breach of decency customs the new ruling applies to the entire country the BBC said what the, the BBC get out of there <laughs> okay hang on alrighty the sucky truck is going away I was seriously about to start humming the Doctor Who theme and wait. Okay, so it's going away now. Um, I'm thinking probably he was hiking in like the spring or the summer rather than the winter. But it's the Alps. They're like always cold. Well, I don't know. Maybe he was reliving parts of the sound of music that didn't make it to the movie. Well, I guess maybe there's a <laughs> rule 34. If it exists, there's a porn for it. <laughs> I don't even want to Google that one. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> don't ever, ever, ever make that mistake. Ever. You know there's Doctor Who porn? There isn't. There is. It's, uh, well, there's one. I believe her name... I don't know what her real life name is, but I believe the character she played was Joe Grant, and she is posed naked on a Dalek. And there has actually been a porno released of 